G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. I apologise for my long hiatus, uh, but basically I've been pretty sick, so I've had a lot going on, I've had four wisdom teeth removed, and now I've got tonsillitis. I've been put on some pretty heavy antibiotics, uh, and as you can probably, sa sa that probably tell, I sound like shit. But that's okay, because I have some excellent content for you. Anyway ladies and gents, before we actually get into today's video, I have a sponsor for you. Today's video is sponsored by Opera GX. Opera is the world's first gaming browser, and while that sounds a bit odd, at first, the features and customizations of Opera sets it apart as one of, if not the best browser on the market. Aside from Opera GX's in-browser integrations with Discord, Twitter, Facebook, and more, Opera GX features a unique resource limiter that reduces CPU, RAM, and internet bottlenecks caused by browsing through all of that homework. Yep, I saw that. Don't try and hide, the, hide those tabs with ammo racks and side skirts. I have been personally using Opera for uh, some time now and used its network limiter feature regularly to upload videos on potato internet without it stopping other users in the house from using the internet. Both Opera GX's wide array of customization and basis of Google Chrome allow for both a visually appealing and highly functional browsing experience. Personally, my favourite feature is Opera's ability to pop out video into another window, and this allows me to watch YouTube content on my laptop while working on essays and scripts without requiring an extra screen. As you know with me, I only recommend sponsors I would actually use, so download Opera GX for free in the description below for what is genuinely the best browsing experience out there. And just a little bit off script, I really like Opera actually, I haven't had any issues with it and I genuinely find it to be an excellent experience. I would highly recommend you guys at least have a look at it. It is free, so download that link in the description below. Thank you very much, Opera, for supporting the channel, and thank you guys for letting me take some sponsorships. So, today we're going to be having a look at, as you can probably tell, the F84F. Now, the F84F is uh, basically an F84G on steroids, or at least in theory. It's got a swept wing, and that basically makes it better for higher speeds, uh, with a little bit of a trade-off in, uh, I guess, turning capabilities. As you can tell, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this uh, plane at all. It is definitely not painful to play, uh, and I highly recommend that everyone flies every F-84F in the entire game. For those of you that can't tell, that was sarcastic. So, why is the F-84F so goddamn terrible? Well, there are two main reasons. The F-84F has very poor acceleration. The acceleration on this plane is absolutely garbage, and that's one of the things that makes planes like the G91 really good. It might not have a good top speed, it might not have a great climb rate, good energy retention, but it has a very good acceleration, and that's what gives it a little bit of an edge over its competitors. Not only that, the F84F is in a really crappy matchmaker. It's at 8.3, the same battle rating as the MiG-15 BIS, and the f 86A5 and F86 F35 Sabres. So you're going to basically be coming up against MiG 15s every single game. Good luck. And if you're not, you're going to be coming up against things like, I don't know, F86s, which can run rings around you because they just have a better engine. The problem with the F84F is it is basically an 8.0 plane facing what are essentially 8.7 jets at the same level every single time, so you're basically putting yourself into a full up tier even when you're fully down tiered. I think this is uh, close to a full up tier, but not quite. The problem with uh, Gaijin is they've decided to change some battle ratings around, but haven't really thought this one through. Maybe the algorithm is supposedly better, but in this case it's clearly let this plane down and it's clearly let a few other planes down. But in this case here, the F-84F is genuinely one of the most painful planes to fly. That being said, when you do get a good match, it is certainly not bad. Ideally, like this plane should be put at 8.0 or 7.7 .7 because it just never seeds that advertised top speed. I have very, very rarely gotten to 1100 kilometers per hour. I just don't see those speeds. Uh, I guess you would have to put the plane in a straight line for a very, very long time. and doing that in War Thunder is impractical, particularly with the way that battles play out, and not necessarily the map size, but more the way that a match plays out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm getting a little bit of altitude, 
This plane doesn't really climb that well, but I'm going to try and climb at a speed where if someone catches me out, I can sort of re-engage them. And what I'm doing here is basically making the best of a, uh, a bad situation, if you will. F84G there below me, I'm not really going to worry about him. I'm going to keep climbing. I'm not going to be focusing or I'm not going to be seagulling after enemies because that happens. F86A5, not only above me, but uh, undoubtedly faster at the same time. I'm going to try and burst up to him, but it's really not going to work. This F86A5 can basically dictate the fight however they want, and uh, it looks like he's just going to continue in a straight line, which, you know, works for me. And then he realizes that there is a uh, sub-105, and um, I think he's just going to keep ignoring me. So, I'm going to try and chase. You can tell this is not going to end well, uh, because the F86 is just so much more powerful. And at the same battle rating, for some reason. But that's okay, because we're going to make the best out of a bad situation. The F-86F in this case, this is the French premium one, because basically I am not going to suffer through stock grind on an F-86F. Uh, this particular plane is uh, kind of interesting. It's actually got an interesting history. The French decided to stick uh, IAF roundels on their uh, F-84, uh, F-84Fs uh, and decided to fly French pilots into the, I think it was the Suez Canal crisis, I'm not really sure, um, but one of the Arab-Israeli conflicts sometime in the late 20th century. And yeah, they were basically like the Russians flying North Korean planes uh, in North Korea. It's kind of interesting actually. I wonder who else does that in sort of society or in any other sort of conflict in modern times. That would be kind of interesting. So. Speaking of interesting, there is another A5 Sabre that is above me. Who would have guessed? The best thing about the uh, up tier to 8.7, I will have to say, is getting put into matches with G91s. The G91s are going to be your little little friends, because they're the ones that are going to force the A5s into turns and go, are going to force them to bleed their energy. Not only that, but they can basically set up dogfights for you, and you just come in and sort of sweep up the, uh, the remains, if you will. And that's kind of what's started to transpire here. The A5 has run away from a dogfight with this particular G91 and now he's gotten himself into a pickle, a little 2v1 and on top of that all of the enemies that are sort of a big threat are mowing the lawn. They're sort of sitting quite low and I can basically go and boom and zoom them whenever I want. Now this G91 here he's uh, going up a little bit and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down onto the A5, beautiful bait there by the G91, and I'm going to try and snag myself a little kill. I only get a hit onto the left wing, but I can bleed some speed in a turn here and try and catch him in the vertical when he's nice and slow. You can see that the F84F is really just a bus. It's so not meant for dogfighting. It is definitely meant to be used for speed. But the sad thing is, at 8.3, you're never going to be able to use that speed because everything is both faster than you and climbs better, so good luck. Speaking of good luck, F86 uh, F35 is coming in pretty hot, and there's another plane here that's coming in nice and hot, another F35 Sabre. Going for a weird-ass inverted head-on. If you're going to do that, I'm pretty much guaranteed to kill. You don't, don't go inverted, please. It, it makes me sad. What doesn't make me sad though is that A5 Sabre getting smacked by an A9. Beautiful work there by the G91 and I guess some beautiful baiting there by me. Not too bad actually. He doesn't go down quite straight away though. He does look a little bit uh, damaged and just as I'm about to go and euthanize him I suppose, I find out that I've got this gentleman on my, uh, on my backside. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself into some rolls if he played his cards right here, he would have had me in a second, but he's gone and overshot Mark, and now this leaves me in an advantageous position. Not only that, the F-84G and the other F-86 are too far away to help him, and instead what I'm going to do is not risk it and wait for that uh, A5 to come and sweep me up, but I'm going to go and get a little bit of speed. Speed is basically a king in jets, and if you don't have any speed, you're basically fucked, so... I don't, I don't want to get fucked, especially not in this thing which is a pain in the ass to play as it is. So I'm going to try and play a little bit more conservatively, uh, try and be a little bit more, uh, you know, careful of my speed. And instead, I'm basically going to try and take this bait here from the G91. Again, a fantastic bait. 
I see the a F-35 coming in once more. I decide to dodge and then go straight for the A-5. Now that the A-5 is nice and slow, I've pretty much got him in the bag here. It's one of those things that just makes you really, really smile. The uh, G-91 has basically set up a few kills, and I guess, I'm not really sure if it was intentional, but either way, you basically made my day. Um, a couple of kills in the F-84F is a miracle, to be honest. This thing is absolute dog shit, and it's no surprise that no one plays it. Anyway, our next candidate here is either going to be the F-80 or the F-86F. Now, it's more likely going to be the F-80 because I can actually keep up with him in a straight line. Not only that, the F-86F is running away. He's also basically leading the G91 into a death sentence here with the F-80C trailing hot on the heels of the G91. So, we've got ourselves a little bit of a situation here. A4B going head on, I'm not going to take that in the slightest. I'm going to duck underneath these guns and just keep going in a straight-ish line trying not to sort of fall victim to him and then I notice that the F-80 is nice and slow and two kilometers behind me so I'm gonna turn look at how much speed I've bled in a single turn in this thing it is definitely not a dogfighter but like I said good luck using your speed at this battle rating. things like the F-80 are in some cases going to outrun you like in this case here because I just don't have the acceleration just like I said earlier but the G91 is basically keeping the F-80C busy enough that uh, it gives me enough of an opportunity to get onto his 6 and go for a quick spray, damage his fuel tank, and perhaps get a nice little pilot snipe. Isn't that beautiful? This G91 has basically, or, or both G91s, have basically set up all of my kills. And that makes me really sad because I can't set up any of my own kills in this plane because it's just not competitive enough. And that that is the real tragedy of the F-84. A plane that is competitive in War Thunder, basically means that you can set up your own kills and do your own baiting and energy trap and everything like that but a plane where you have to feed off your teammates and and basically just sort of scab off them it feels really shit of course like getting a kill is getting a kill but having a plane so poorly balanced that it just doesn't cut it at its own battle rating or in a full down tier makes me really sad because this plane could be so much fun and it has such a cool history behind it and it's just not it's just being sort of thrown away it really genuinely makes me sad because this plane just could have been so much better it does make me think though a lot of people have been sort of praising the MiG-15 A5 Sabre type meta that has returned and it's made them say things like it's just like the good old days now for me the good old days weren't exactly the good old days you have to remember that not everything is perfect. Like, War Thunder is not a perfect game, it never has been, and it never will be. But things like top tier being supposedly balanced, it just wasn't back in the day. I also like how I just took an AGM like it was nothing, so... Sucks to be, uh, sucks to suck, Mr. A4. Enjoy your, uh, enjoy your AA death, so... Good on your Bazza. Regardless, I'd like to keep talking about the sort of good old days theory. I, I genuinely don't believe that there is a good old days. There never was and there never will be. It's just looking through rose-tinted glasses. Think about all the crap that was going on in 2016, 2017 in Jets, or even earlier. Things like the F2H Banshee at 8.0, things like the Vampire at 8.0, things like the Venom at 9.0 and the Meteor Mark 8 at 9.0, these things were useless. And now we're starting to see what is basically the same thing. We're getting, sure, F-86 versus MiG-15 once more, but we're also getting the same problems that came with it. And for me, I would rather throw F-86 versus MiG-15 to the wind than have this crappy matchmaker once again. Ideally, what I would like to see is more battle rating decompression. I've been sort of yelling about it for years, but the snail does as the snail does, and there's basically nothing that we can do to stop it. Speaking of nothing that we can do to stop, have a look at the tickets. Something else that just adds a little bit more salt to the wound. Just a little bit more. We are never going to win this because there are so something like three or four enemies left, and I'm too slow to even get to this F-86A in time for the tickets to run out. It really sucks, because the F-84F could have been something great, but... Uh, 
came into Gaichin's hands. <laughs> it's a real shame, because I could have enjoyed playing this plane, but I genuinely can't recommend it. I'm very sorry. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. I really, really appreciate that. Go and check them out in the description and the pinned comment below. Thank you for watching. Take care. And I'll catch you next time. Also, tonsillitis fucking sucks.